can sing, I just want to sing. <laughs> Once I wandered out in sin, had no peace, no joy within, and my soul was burdened down with pride. But the Savior came along. the wind inside Well, I'm on the way inside I'm on the way inside No more I'm in sin Well, I am not I've been listening in the fire for the cold but truth and right the rays of As your friend Spencer here. I want to talk to you about channel membership. This channel has turned into like a thank you for taking the time to watch today's video. But before we get started, go ahead and subscribe to this channel and check out our backlog of great content for you guys. And then also consider hitting this join button, becoming a channel member today. You get all kinds of perks and things like that. And if this video was a blessing to you, don't forget to click the link below and make a donation in the PayPal. God bless you, friend, and we appreciate you. May God speak to your heart during this video. This is heresy. All right, everybody, thank you very much. My camera did it again. I can't believe it. This just drives me bananas, man. It just drives me bonkers, so whatever. But anyway, we've got Brother Justin here. He's here. Sir. How you doing, Brother Justin? A little better than I deserve. I'll tell you what, that's, that's driving me crazy. I don't even know why it does that. That's just nuts. So we're going to try to fix that here just a bit. Let's try to fix it real quick, and let's uh, let's try to play a song, and then we will be right back. God bless you. When I was 18 years old, I was under terrible conviction of my sin and I didn't understand what I needed to do. I really was lost and had no man to guide me. I went to the grocery store and a book caught my eye and it was called God's Promises for Your Every Need. This is the exact copy of that book, the one that I bought when I was 18. As I was going through the book, I discovered that it really didn't have a whole lot about the plan of salvation in there. And I told the Lord, I said, Lord, if you'll let me someday, I'd like to do a book, something like this, but better. And that being said, the Lord has allowed us to do a book just like that. And we are thrilled to introduce to you guys today the Doctrine Matters Bible Topic Guidebook. This book has over 300 pages of Bible verses categorized in all different relevant topics. What does the Bible say about addiction? What does it say about being afraid? What does it say about alcohol? What does it say about backsliding and baptism, the local church? Uh, what does it say about carnality and character? 
Uh, we cover topics like finances, money, persecution, preaching, profanity, sobriety, strife, vengeance, unbelief, your thoughts, your testimony, your walking with God, worship and witnessing and zeal. All of that is covered in this book. This book contains over 2,000 different verses on all these topics. And we encourage you guys to hit the link in the description below and buy one of these off of Amazon and consider buying one for a friend or a family member as a gift. And you could buy one for a person who's struggling because this book is designed to help people understand what the Bible has to say about all these great topics. We pray that the Lord would bless you as you get your copy of the Doctrine Matters Bible Topic Guidebook. All right, I'm here. I'm here. My camera works, and we're here with Brother Justin tonight. How you doing over there, Brother Justin? Doing good. How you doing? I'm doing good, and we're just uh, plugging along for Jesus. And uh, Hey, we just got somebody just became a member. It says, Caitlin Fotenot just became a member. <laughs> I, don't, I can't read that word anyway. Fast and confident. Fuck no. Thank you very much. But, well, I, I don't even understand. <laughs> hey, we don't have a thing plugged in here. We can't even hear our... Uh, our sound effects, man. We gotta fix that. Here we go. Let's, can you unplug that? We everything's going wrong. That's in the back of the computer right there. Everything's going wrong tonight, and we're just getting started. I'm sorry. We're gonna fix that right there. Put that right in there, and so I can hear our sound effects. There it is. There we go. That's it's working. Need. That's what we needed right there. So God bless you, Caitlin. You helped reveal another bug and some of the. We're having some of the worst live streams ever, brother Justin. That's true. And it's not good, and I'm not very happy about it, but that's okay. The Lord the Lord will give grace and glory, and we shall survive. So appreciate you guys very much being here tonight. We're going to talk about Mark Driscoll. Ooh. Oh, yeah. He's going to be crazy, and there's going to be a bunch of oh, out there people going nuts <laughs> on us about Mark Driscoll, but that's all right. That's all right. So uh, we're going to talk about him. There's some there's some legit things that we want to try to talk about, and uh, everybody, everybody in the world <laughs> is talking about this whole Mark Driscoll thing, and uh, we are going to make sure it happens. Um, they're saying Fontenot. Fonten- Tony Fontenot. says Fontenot. Is that how you say it? Fontenot? Fontenot. 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 Hey, this is the guy who fed me boudin in, uh, in Texas one time. <laughs> years ago and uh i love him and he's a blessing to me so he's uh he's one of my heroes so um anyway so we uh we're gonna be talking about mark driscoll um let's see kd68 does anyone know where spencer is it's in the studio hi <laughs> you're looking at him and so um he says worst live stream every stream. Yeah, maybe maybe I do. Maybe I do. I need more sound effects, and I, I agree. I do need more sound effects. But here's uh, me and my son today. We made a uh, little video for you guys to help with the cause of smiting thine like button. And we wanted to reveal this to you guys for watching tonight's uh, live stream with us. And we want to get you guys. We got 624 people watching, and I got 160 people hit the like button so far. That's a terrible ratio, terrible ratio. And uh, so we've created this video for you guys to teach you and to help you see the importance of smiting your like button. And uh, without further ado, we will play that video for you guys. All right, I got a few minutes to myself here. I wonder what I should do. I think I'm gonna watch one of those Spencer Smith guys' videos. This is gonna be really awesome. Oh, here's a good one. Today we're gonna have a whole video dedicated to why contemporary Christian music is run by a bunch of effeminate weirdos. Make sure you smite your like button and the lizard people won't get you. It's very serious out there. Please take the time to do it. I love this guy. Right, He's so stinking funny. <laughs> oh, man. It's because of the hair on the men. Oh, this is going to be good. Oh, no, the like button. The like button. Oh, okay. Where'd it go? 
Where was he? What just happened? I thought it was just a big joke. Wow. <gasps> All right, so that got us about another 100 likes on this live stream. And so that was worth it. So praise the Lord for that. Uh, we appreciate you guys. We're going to do a lot more stuff like that, Brother Justin. I like I like doing stuff like that. It's fun to me. It's good to and, laugh every uh, now and then. Yeah, yeah, every now and then, you know. We, we, we want to be charismatic when we, you know. Can be extreme on it. But. No, we don't, we don't want to like be, be funny. Can't be too know? happy. <laughs> no. I mean, I, I think we ought to. And um, so if you don't, if you do not hit the like button on this video, I promise you them lizard people are right behind you right now and they're going to eat you and you don't want that. So um, tonight we're going to, we're going to stomp where angels fear to tread. <laughs> we're going to get into Mark Driscoll territory and uh, it's going to be a lot of nuttiness standing up out there and we're going to, we're going to have a lot of fun with it. So let me open up all my, all my, uh, bookmark tabs that i had and uh, let's see if we can get those going and um goodness gracious there's there's so much happening here i've, I've had every meltdown imaginable today <laughs> and it has been wild so let's start with this let's just start out with like who mark driscoll is and i want to i want to take you all the way back to the beginning and show you uh what the axe 29 network is now this was a uh mark driscoll was the guy that um, he started this whole operation. And I uh, just want to read you just a little bit from Wikipedia, if I can, real quick, um, where it says here that the Acts 29 is a global family of church planting churches that adheres to Calvinist theology. And Mark Driscoll basically started this. It says it derives from the book of Acts in the New Testament, which had 28 chapters, making Acts 29 the next chapter in the history of the church. A number of other Christian organizations also use the phrase Acts 29 in their respective names. Now, I um, when I lived in St. Louis, I went to a contemporary Christian rock concert, and I, inter I interviewed several of the bands. They gave me full access pass and everything. I went back there and interviewed several of the bands. I think two of them were from Acts 29 churches, and... Um, my my point was simple. What what do you you know? Tell me how you got saved. What do you think the Lord's doing with your music? That's basically all I ask these guys. And out of those two Acts twenty nine bands that were from Acts twenty nine churches, neither one of them told me a testimony of salvation that satisfied me. They 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 told me some pretty scary stuff. Uh, but it says here that Acts twenty nine was founded in nineteen ninety eight by Mark Driscoll and Dave Nicholas, and uh, so that's how basically this all got started. And August. Uh, 2014, Acts 29 removed Mark Driscoll and Mark Hill's uh, Mars Hill Church from its membership. According to the Acts 29 board, this was due to the nature of accusations against Mark Driscoll, much uh, most of which have been confirmed by him. Sub subsequent years saw the network restructure with a focus on diversification, financial accountability, and uh, devolved leadership transforming from an American-based network to a diverse global family of church-planting churches. And so um, basically that is... That's how Mark Driscoll kind of came on the scene. Now, for those of you who don't know, there there is a podcast series out there, and I encourage everybody to go listen to it, um, called The Rise and Fall of Mars Hill. And what that will do for you is that that will show you everything, all the nitty-gritty of everything that happened behind the scenes, of all the ugly stuff that went on. Um, and there was some very stout very heavy 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 accusations against against Mark Driscoll that I think should not necessarily be overlooked by any serious Christian now um, let me do this I, I want to start off tonight uh, I'm gonna read you a couple tweets here in a few minutes and I'm gonna go into all the just the the views that people are having about this whole situation um, but I want you guys to know first of all, what a New Testament bishop is. Um, guys, I, I, I don't even like to say this because it kind of gets a little bit hairy when you say this type stuff. 
But there are people out there who are Christian YouTubers who have no business teaching anybody theology. I want you to know that. There are people, <laughs> I know, I, Brother Justin, I know one. It was a young man in Texas. He was serving on a church staff. Uh, I was told that there was accusations that he messed up with a young lady and that now he moved to another state and now he's starting a YouTube channel. Oh, it's what, do we, what do we do with that? You know, it's just funny how that works. So that's that's what's coming down the pike that way. Um, also, uh, there there have been men out there, and I I know some of them who literally have no ministry because they destroyed their ministry, and so now the only thing they do is is some sort of YouTube channel. When and many of them, all they do is they talk about John MacArthur the whole time. And I think there's like a whole John MacArthur economy on the internet. You know, you ever noticed? I've seen that? a lot of that. Yeah. I mean, there's people out there that uh, honestly, um, if it weren't for Paul Washer and Vody Bauckham and John MacArthur video clips on the internet, they wouldn't even have a business. They would have nothing. <laughs> um, so they, they they and and the people who are running that stuff. Several of those people are very sketchy. Let's just put it that way. Um, there's one who came at me a long time ago, telling people that I was unsound and that I, you know, and and it was something over body, soul, spirit. It was really dumb, brother Justin. Um, and then I, I kind of made a few calls, found out who he was, and found out that he had uh, he had messed up with a young lady mm. at a church, and um, he uh, he was brought under church discipline by his local church and he refused to submit to that church discipline. So he moved to another church and started a YouTube channel. Um, and he's doing well, he's doing good. <laughs> I'm glad for him. But, uh, if that all came out about him, it would derail what he's doing. But listen, I'm, I'm just telling you guys, I think that, um, the, what what we're doing here on YouTube, I think, is a good thing. And the only reason it's a good thing is because it's being done by somebody who's scripturally qualified. Okay, and I, I, I think that's a fair thing to say. Um, and I really, um, I, I think that's, you know, like, for example, if a guy's been married seven times, I don't think he needs to be doing online teaching. Is that is that fair to say, Brother Justin? I mean, is that I think fair? it goes as far as to say probably shouldn't give marriage advice either. Yeah, probably you know? shouldn't give marriage advice. Probably shouldn't give any theology advice. Just, just throwing that out um, there. And I can just hear someone out there saying, "What about the woman at the well?" I don't think she should have started a YouTube channel either. I'm glad she's saved. She's going to heaven. But I don't think that woman needs to be talking about you know whatever. So that's just my opinion on that. So um, <coughs> here's what I want you to do. I think that the people that you follow. And I, I put myself under this too. I think the people that we should follow as God's people, the people that we should uh, we should look to, we should follow their faith, we should get information from them, um, ought to be scripturally qualified men. Now, <clears throat> can I tell you something? I love you, women. I, I think women are wonderful. I've got a wife who's a woman. I've got two daughters who are women. Brother Justin is over here. He likes women so much that he had, he decided he's going to have five girls. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, he's got a wife and five daughters. <laughs> and uh, he uh, he struck out. Amen. Hey, that's six it. if you count the dog. You that's know? right. <laughs> he's got a girl dog too. So couldn't win there. Oh I tried. boy, what a mess. I'm sorry for you. Um. So, but um. I don't think women need to be getting on the internet and teaching theology to people. Is that is that is that tough to say, Brother Justin? I don't think so. Huh? I I we've we've used the word influencer today, and influencer is kind of a catch-all word for people with a large internet following, and um, I do think that um, there are people out there, women especially, who are calling themselves influencers who are women preachers who are pretending that they're not women preachers. And um, ladies, let me, let me direct you. We're going to go to Titus 1 here to talk about the qualification of a bishop. But if, if what you're doing is outside the bounds of Titus chapter 2, I don't think God's in that. Um, and I think what we've done is we've kind of, you know, we slammed the front door on women preachers, but we left the back door unlocked. And a lot of these YouTube channels have risen up 
and are um, run by women, and I think that's a problem. So let's do this. Let's go to the qualifications of a New Testament bishop. This is who the Lord says you should be looking to for spiritual leadership. And uh, it says that um, verse number Titus 1, 6, If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly, uh, for a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry. Uh, <laughs> we're talking about Mark Driscoll tonight, okay? So not soon angry, um, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught that he may be able to, by sound doctrine, both to exhort and convince the gainsayers. Okay, so I think that um, what um, if a man's life does not match these four verses right here, um, then I don't think that man needs to be running a big ministry. I don't think he needs to be pastoring in the New Testament church. There's other things he can do. Um, there's other things he probably he'd probably be great. You know, I mean, I uh, if a, if a guy needs a bodyguard and you got a brawler in your church who can put a karate chop on somebody, um, maybe hire that guy to be to, <laughs> to be your bodyguard, uh, but don't let him be your pastor. I mean, that's if if a man's if a man's first instinct to solve every problem that comes up at the local church is just to beat everybody up. Up, he's going to hurt the church. He he really will, and um, and so I hold myself to these standards. And uh, you know, brother Justin's here, and he helps us on this channel. I hold him to these standards as well. Yeah. Um, you know, if if uh, if if you know if, if if somebody if somebody like you know in a pastor position gets a DUI, which that happened the other day to a Southern Baptist church, and. Um, uh, that happened to a Southern Baptist church in Dallas. I know it was a West Texas, some big Southern Baptist church pastor got caught in a DUI <laughs> and he resigned. I think he should have. Yeah. Um, so I think, I think we're, we're, we're playing some dangerous games here. Uh, what are people talking about in the comment section, brother Justin? How's it going? Pastor, preacher. Well, women can preach, yeah, see, just not you know, pastor. They're trying to use terminology. It, it there. does. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It, it these pe there are people out there that literally they would they would jump off a bridge without a parachute to their own death before they ever admitted that the Bible says a bishop ought to be a man. I mean, it's just it's amazing to me that that's how adamant people are about this. But that's I guess that's just a Pentecostal mindset. So we understand that this is what a New Testament pastor is this is the qualification this is a type of man that ought to be holding the office of a bishop now here's one thing i want you to go to okay holding fast the faithful word that he hath been taught i think and i've said this before i think that if a man gets ordained at an independent fundamental baptist church and then he goes off to montana after he's got everybody's money through deputation and he goes and starts a church and he decides that I'm gonna I'm gonna take the independent fundamental Baptist money, and then I'm gonna come out here and become a non-denominational ESV uh, using uh, you know Presbyterian plural uh, uh, plurality of elders type polity in my church. I think they ought to call his ordination. Yeah. I think so. And the reason I say that specific example because I know a specific example of that where some kid went on went out and traveled for years and said I'm gonna go to Montana and I'm ordained independent Baptist blah 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 went out there started drinking beers and started using an ESV Bible and they uh, not only did churches drop him as a supporter but they also his home church actually called him and ordered his ordination papers to come back and Ooh. withdrew his ordination from his local church. And he played the victim, and he played the recovering fundamentalist angle. <laughs> oh, woe is me. I was hurt by fundamentalism. No, you're just a liar is what yeah. you are. You lied. You you took money and told people this is what you're doing. And, um, and or, you, you know, you took money and said this is what you are. And it turns out that's not what you are. And so if you have a major shift in your doctrine, not only should your ordination be withdrawn, but your support should be withdrawn, and uh, and I think I think that people should have their you know have their ordination revoked and really should be out of the ministry. I I really do believe that any man 
who goes out in the ministry and changes gears on major doctrinal issues is proven that they don't have any real convictions. They're just a grifter. Now, the title of this live stream tonight is Mark Driscoll, A Wandering Star. And here's what I want to show you. I'm going to go to the book of Jude for a bit. And I want you to see, and, and tonight, please just hear me out. Hear what I'm saying, okay? Um, I, I know you may hear this and, uh, you know, just think, oh, boy, that's, uh, that's not good. I don't like what he's saying. Just, just follow me for just a minute, and we'll be okay. So Jude 13 talks about false teachers and says, verse number 12, these are some spots in your feast of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth and uh, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. It says in verse 13 that these people are raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame. But that sounds like some people I've seen. But it also says here one of the characteristics of false teachers that they're wandering stars, meaning this, um, that they're always changing. Now, I'm writing a book on the book of Jude right now, and it's going to be titled Wandering Stars. And the thing, the, the, the illustration that's being used here in the Bible is that back in the old days when you used to navigate the ocean at night, you know, you didn't have a GPS. All you had was the stars to look at. And uh, there were some stars in the sky that were fixed. And, man, you could, you know, I know that I'm going north because that's the north star. I know I'm going west because that star. And, and they're, they're fixed. They're not moving. Uh, you can count on them to be in their place wherever they are. But what what happens when these stars that you use to navigate your life and to find out where you're going, what happens if those stars are always moving? Well, you have to move with them. And then eventually, you know, they're, they're, they're this one year, then they're that this year, and this, this. I mean, and, and that's one thing about false teachers that you'll notice is that uh, they, they're always, they're, it's like they're, they, they don't know what they are. For example, I'll give you an example of this. A good example is um, is a guy named Stephen Furtick. Now, Stephen Furtick was, uh, people don't realize this, but Stephen Furtick was a Southern Baptist for yep. a long time. He went to a Southern Baptist seminary and, um, you know, talked about, uh, you know, just had a degree from a Southern Baptist seminary. And uh, now then somehow he got involved with T.D. Jakes and got involved with uh, the charismatic crowd. And so Stephen Furtick has wandered from, a conservative Southern Baptist background to now he's now what Stephen Furtick's one of the worst charismatics in the world, uh, very dangerous stuff. And so now when it comes to Mark Driscoll, I want to point out something that we just showed you guys a few minutes ago. And uh, that was the fact that the Acts 29 network started as a Calvinist organization. So, um, just remember that, okay? Let me let me show you a couple things here. All right, he started out as a as a Calvinist organization, and uh, let's see here, where is it? I'm gonna pull that up. Okay, they adhere to Calvinist theology. That's what Acts 29 Network is. Well, what is Mark Driscoll today? Mark Driscoll is involved with the Demon Slayer people now. Mark Driscoll, for all intents and purposes, is a charismatic right now. Um, now that's that's quite a leap. <laughs> Just put it to you that way. Um, for you to go from being, you know, reformed satirologically, and uh, you know, and we're not here. I'm not going to discuss reformed theology right now. But I know there's that's always going to come up. It always does. <laughs> um, but when you go from a Calvinist pastor in Seattle, Washington, to down the road, your face is appearing on movie posters with Vlad Savchuk, Isaiah Saldivar, uh, Julie Signorelli, Mike Signorelli, and you're on a you're on a flyer with Jennifer, Jenny Weaver, who is like Greg Locke with a wig. Um, you're a grifter, man. You're a wandering star. You've, you've changed so much that it's frightening. I don't even know what you are anymore. I really I have no clue what Mark Driscoll is. Uh, and, and here's the thing. A man without convictions, like true blue convictions, I know this is what the Word of God teaches, and I ain't changing for nobody. Subscribers or no subscribers, money or no money, uh uh-uh. uh, I, 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 if if it if everybody in the world thinks I'm crazy, I'll just sit at home by myself and believe this. Uh, that's what a conviction is, and for Mark Driscoll to 
fellowship with this um, makes me say emphatically, he is not holding fast the form of sound doctrine. He's, he's, he's a grifter. He's changed what he believes through the years. And, um, and, and that, that right, like really that, that right there ought to be enough to disqualify a man <laughs> because yesterday was Calvinism tomorrow or today it's charismatic demon slayer stuff tomorrow what, what are you going to be what are you going to be tomorrow well, if the seven day adventist have like a big revival are you going to be <laughs> you going to go be a seven day adventist i mean what are you doing and some people in the comment section seem to be suggesting that that he's chasing money and that may that may be the case i i i don't know but they're not chasing doctrine now look here here's honestly i um and I say this knowing that the Lord is listening and knowing that we've got how many people watching right now? I've got over a thousand people watching tonight. Um, I was ordained as an independent Baptist. I was ordained as a fundamentalist. Um, and I, and a matter of fact, at my ordination, they told me that if I ever changed the, the version of the Bible that I'm using, that I need to send my ordination paper back. And I said, okay, no problem. Um, because I, I it didn't bother me because I had that that issue nailed down, um, but if I got on here one day and I said, guys, listen, I, I I've got all this wrong. I, this whole fundamentalism thing ain't really where it's at. I just don't. I, I think maybe I was just narrow minded, and you, you know that I've revisited these issues, and now I do believe that we need to be a non denominational church. We need to have a plurality. Plur, 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 I can't even say that word. Plurality of <laughs> elders. I think that um, I think that I'm going to use the NIV Bible from now on. And by the way, we're going to play Phil Wickham music uh, for in our church, and uh, that's just what we're going to do and I'm sorry for all the confusion that I've caused. Um, if, if, if I did that, first of all, you need to call me and make sure that I'm not having some stroke or some sort of mental failure or something because that would be, that would be quite, a, quite a shift in my ministry as far as what I believe. Um, but what I just shared with you, what I just said, what I just described to you would be something comparable to what Mark Driscoll has done and is now doing. So um, that's that's where that's where we, that you know and and somebody said David Rector said we'd unsubscribe and yes I, I would expect you to that would be a fair thing to do because that is um, that would be in 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 scripture that would be a disqualifying from the ministry move and really if if that was the case I would I would find my ordination certificate and I would put it in a certified envelope and I would mail it to uh, 142 Old Peachtree Road in Swanee, Georgia and send an official letter saying, I'm sorry, I just can't accept this ordination anymore. And I would, I would remove myself from the ministry. Um, but that, but look, what I just described to you is, is if basically in a very crude cliff notes way, what Mark Driscoll has seemed to have done. He's he has shifted gears. I mean, he, how do you go from an Acts twenty nine Calvinist to now you're a demon slayer in just a few years, buddy? That that would be quite a, I mean, you know. And by the way, guys, let me tell you this: the the day I, they would sell Frosties in hell before they ever before you guys would ever see me on a poster with Isaiah Saldivar, unless it was something you know a fight or something <laughs> i don't know i'm just i'm just being funny but like they was they would sell frosties in where the boogeyman lives before you ever saw me on a flyer with uh with jenny weaver cooperating in ministry and i i don't i, I but i'm gonna tell you this is not good so that's that's what mark driscoll has done now let me do this so i'm gonna take a break don't go away I'm going to give you why I believe, um, I gave you one reason, but I'm going to give you a couple other reasons why I believe Mark Driscoll is disqualified from ministry and should not be in ministry. I just don't think he has the temperament of a man that is biblically qualified. Um, and I'm going to give you just a content warning. We're going to show a couple things that I don't normally show on this channel, maybe a little bit more rough. And uh, so maybe I'm going to just go ahead and give you a, a trigger warning, a content warning. And uh, so be ready for that. We will be right back. And make sure you don't go away. 
Hey guys, your friend Spencer here. A couple years ago, the Lord laid on my heart to do some research into the contemporary Christian music world, and I was astounded at, at what I found. I just found so many unbelievably unbiblical things, even some demonic things that were happening. And the Lord led me to put all that into a book form, and this is the book we have written, Calling Evil Good, The Live Christian Rock and Roll. And as far as books that are dealing with the negative and the dangerous aspects of contemporary Christian music, this book right now is the number one seller as of the time of the recording of this video and so uh, we want to put this out there to let you know about this book uh, this book will be shipped to your front door by Amazon and we've had so many good reports from all over the world really of people saying that man this book really opened up my eyes to the truth of this entire industry and we deal with people like Hulk Hogan Britney Spears Beyonce uh, Amy Grant Alice Cooper Elvis Presley Larry Norman R Kelly Puff Daddy and all the record companies really all together we deal with the, the whole big spectrum so get your copy today there's a link in the description below and I know this book will help you understand the issue better and understand why this is an issue so God bless you friend hope you enjoyed the book subscribe to our YouTube channel and look forward to many good updates with you in the future God bless you All right, guys, thank you very much for being here. I want to show you something. This, um, and I, I really don't even want to share this with you guys, but I think this is something that just kind of needs to be, uh, I think this kind of captures who Mark Driscoll is. Uh, this is just an old sermon of, uh, of what he would say from the pulpit. And, and by the way, if, if you never looked into the old Mark Driscoll, the pre beard, uh, you know, here's, here's old Mark Driscoll. This is new Mark Driscoll right here. Okay. So just remember that. All right. Um, young Mark Driscoll acts 29 Mark Driscoll versus, uh, uh, charismatic Mark Driscoll. Um, this man, if you ever went back to, I don't know, if, you, if, if you ever went back to, and just listen to some of his old sermons. This man, have you ever listened to his old stuff? His, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. This man talked about bedroom stuff with your wife more than he talked about almost anything. And it, like, I'm sitting in the car by myself and I'm embarrassed at what he's saying. I mean, yikes. But this is the type of stuff that kind of captures who Mark Driscoll is. And I just, I want to give you a content warning on what he's, he's going to say something pretty crude here. Um, so let's just, let's just, let's let Mark Driscoll talk. This is one of the most famous things he ever did. Let's just let it happen. We're not talking about this in the car on the way home. Some of you have already whispered in her ear. I'm sorry, I'll do better. Trust me. Let's just move on real quickly. How dare you? Who in the hell do you think you are? That's Mark Abusing Driscoll. Abusing a woman. Neglecting a woman. Being a coward. A fool. Being like your father, Adam. Who do you think you are? You are not God. You are just a man. You're not an impressive man. You're not a responsible yeah. man. So, so a lot of people kind of... Um, a lot of people kind of were shocked by that. <laughs> I can imagine, uh, you know, like if he hadn't said that dirty word, I, that would have been, it's probably just been another Mark Driscoll sermon. But that's one of the things that he said that was just, um, yee, that kind of got everybody talking. And it wasn't long after that that his whole empire collapsed. I mean, he was done after that. So um, that's very important to, to keep in mind. So um, I, I'll give you a couple reasons why I, basically the three big reasons why I don't think Mark Driscoll uh, should be in ministry. I think he's disqualified. Um, number one, any, any man who gets up and says dirty words in a sermon like that, uh, I don't think the man, I don't think the Holy Spirit led him to say that. Okay, so that's a problem right there. And matter of fact, before Jack Scott fell from First Baptist Hammond, first of all, I never was a Jack Scott fan. I, I, I kind of hated his guts. You know, I think, I think a lot of, I think the similarities between Jack Scott and Mark Driscoll were astounding, to be honest with you guys. And that's for my, uh, my fundy brothers here who, uh, who know what I'm talking about. Um, I, I think that the similarities between Jack Scott and Mark Driscoll were quite striking. Um, 
talked about perverted stuff all the time. And if he wasn't talking about it, he always found a way to allude to it. Um, that right there tells me, yee. and, and, and see, that's why, um, I, I don't talk about that stuff on this channel. I, I, I don't, I don't think that that's what God has called any preacher to do. Um, as I read through the, as I read through the pastoral epistles there, you know, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, I just don't see very much where, uh, where the apostle Paul, you know, gave instructions on type stuff like that. So I don't know where these guys are getting all this material to preach. They're certainly not getting it from the Bible. That's for sure. Um, so I, I don't like what he was saying uh, from the pulpit. And I think any man who says stuff like that uh, disgraces the pulpit. But also, um, I think that um, if, if you want the full scoop on this, you need to go to listen to this podcast called The Rise and Fall of Mars Hill. Now, I think it was um, the, uh, what was it, the Gospel... Um, who, who did that podcast? Was it Gospel Coalition? I, th it was, I think it was the Gospel Coalition, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, the Gospel Coalition put that together. Either Christianity Today or Gospel one Coalition. One of those two, yeah. Yeah, it's one of those two. One was. Um, they put it together. And, and of course, those um, those people are kind of left-leaning slanted anyway. But but they give a lot of good information in that podcast. Um, just Just there were a lot of accusations surrounding Mark Driscoll of just being abusive, uh, being just a bully to people. Um, and, uh, it really left a lot of people with a sour taste in their mouth. And so I want you to go check that out. Also, I think the big thing that I think, I think this qualifies a man from the ministry, not just Driscoll, but others is this major shift in doctrine. You know, like if you if you're swinging from one spec side of the spectrum to the other side like some, you know, pendulum, I don't think you need to be in ministry. I, I think you're not stable. I think you're a wandering star. I think you, um, I think you, you know, you don't even know what you believe, let alone standing up telling everybody else what they should believe. I find that to be troubling, and I don't, I don't know if we can rely on a guy like you. It's kind of like, it's kind of like, you know, like if, if there was a guy running for senator, we just lost Mitch McConnell here in Kentucky. He's going to resign, and um, you know, so how's how's the comments doing? We doing okay there? Yeah, not too bad. Got some crazy, a little bit of crazy. Not <laughs> oh, okay. Well, let me know. Um, you know, like if 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 we if if you re elect a Republican, and and you send him to Capitol Hill to represent you in in the the legal system of America, and and you think that there's a fifty percent chance that during the four years of him being elected, uh, that he could possibly flip into a Democrat. Well, you can't you can't rely on a guy like that. Why would you send him over there to uh, to help you? Why would you Why would you send him to elect him to office if you didn't even know what he would believe in two years from now? That's just not a guy you can live uh, rely on. So um, that's the big thing. It's that okay, the cussing in his sermons, the character that he had behind, when he wasn't behind the pulpit, and then also the change in his doctrine showed me that I don't think Mark Griscoll's good. I mean, he's, he says some good stuff, and, and don't get me wrong, there's a lot of things Mark Driscoll says I agree with, uh, like telling men that they need to lead their families. I think that's excellent. I think every man in every church in America <laughs> needs to hear that, okay? Um, that being said, uh, let's, let's get to the whole issue of what happened with Mark Driscoll just the other day. Um, so, matter of fact, let me let me take just a moment. Let's just get to the comments section here. Uh, what what are people saying here? The the turtle is going home. What what's going on with the turtle, brother Justin? Anything? <laughs> well, there, I have no there's idea. There's one guy just posting the like random six six six. Like, what are you doing? Oh there? yeah, is it really? <laughs> uh, let's see here. I I think I saw that. So, um, yeah, somebody just posting six 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 in here. Yeah, we'll just ban that person real quick. And uh, <laughs> you've gotten the ban hammer. Congratulations. That's the first one I got for for a long time. Um, so. <laughs> Uh, Kenneth says Mark Driscoll is the best preacher in the USA. Hey, Amen. Well, I, uh, I appreciate your, your opinion there. And, uh, so, um, Gene Scott, I don't know what's going on here. Um, let's see here. I have, I have no idea what's going on. I, I had some mistakes sticking my head in the comment section. That's what, uh, yeah. So anyway, um, yikes. NYU Mariko. Is that the one yeah, I just got rid of? One, yeah. That's it? Okay. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah. so uh, where's my tinfoil hat? I'm not wearing it tonight. <laughs> so let's get into what Mark Driscoll did 
And uh, it's a pretty fascinating deal. Uh, Mark Driscoll, who's no stranger to controversy, stepped into the heat again over the weekend. A once embattled preacher resigned in 2014 from his role as founding pastor of Mars Hill in Seattle, Washington, amid accusations. He abused his spiritual authority, took the stage of the weekend at the Stronger Men's Conference where he deviated from his planned message to rebuke what he described as the Jezebel spirit present in the Great Southern Bank area in Springfield, Missouri. Got to hand it to Springfield. Uh, every, there's a lot of crazy coming out of Springfield right now. Hey, hey you BBF people, how y'all doing over there? <laughs> Driscoll, 53, was swiftly swiftly called out and removed from the platform by John Liddell, lead pastor of James River Church, which organized the annual men's event. Uh, Before he was deplatformed, Driscoll spoke for several minutes, beginning with a condemnation of the myriad sexual identities that had become ubiquitous in Western culture before turning his address toward the kickoff of the Stronger Men's Conference, which he saw as morally and spiritually problematic. And um, so he, let me just let me just go here. Here's here's basically what happened. Um, the, the this is what the guy said. The mega church uh, has strip sh- strip show like performance at a men's conference. Guest speaker Mark Driscoll spoke out. So basically, what you got you got this dude here who um, a lot of people looked into his background and they have found out that this guy does all kinds of stripping for. LGBT men's meet, you know, like the yeah. dudes, the dude for all intents and purposes is a gay stripper for men. And he got out there, took his clothes off, took his, uh, his entire from the waist up off and decided to get on a pole and do some pole dancing at a Christian. I can't even say, I believe I'm saying this brother, Justin. I mean, <laughs> the, we are, this is the most 2024 thing I have ever seen in my life. You got a you got a dude who's up there stripper pole dancing half naked at a men's Christian conference. I don't know if he called Christian at that point. I don't I, know. Or even a church at that point. <laughs> we are so into the Laodicean era. There's no coming back. There's no hope. The, the you guys and and Go watch Third Adam is all I can tell you. And the dude's licking the sword, and he's going to stick it down his throat. And, and, and he sw- not only did he swallow the sword, they had the pyrotechnics go off. He just, yeah. You know, it went off in the background. And now he's climbing the stripper pole with, um, with this swallowed sword down his throat. I mean, the thing is literally stabbing his gallbladder. And, um, you know, climbing to the rafters. Um, with no safety harness, because you know this is this inspires me to go read my Bible. Apparently, you know, I, like this is provoking me to godliness right here. This is really. <laughs> I mean, this is like I I want to be so right with God after seeing this. I want to I want to live for Jesus. As uh, Vault Dweller says, was this held at the Bohemian Grove? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. That's a good question. <laughs> I mean, at this point, where's the cremation of care? I mean, where's where's Ashtoreth? You know, where where's the the Baal statue? And not only that, he he decided he was going to drop all the way to the ground, and the pyrotechnics go off him with that swallowed sword. Okay, um, yeah, I I think we get I think we get the issue here, um. <laughs> That that what what we just showed you was not even Christian. It was straight from the pits of hell. What we just showed you, and there's other things on here. I'm not gonna sh- I'm not gonna tell you what all this is. Okay, so um, so Driscoll sees like Driscoll sees that, yeah, and does what any normal human would do. <laughs> well, that's what it meant. There's a room full of men there just watching it. No yeah, it. like. <laughs> Like if I go to a, if I paid fifty bucks to go to a men's conference, and they get some gay dude up there swallowing swords and pyrotechnics and he's climbing a stripper pole, I'm gone. Like I am so out the door, and so Driscoll gets up there and, and Driscoll, he's gonna let the fur fly on these people. We're gonna we're gonna play the video here for a minute. We're gonna talk about how to be in Elijah. And how to deal with they have a Jezebel. But let me do this. 
Um, yeah, did, did, uh, first of all, for you Third Adam people, I want you to notice, did you hear the ohm that just started right yeah. there? Did you hear that? Okay. That. I've been up since 1 o'clock in the morning. The reason I'm hoarse is I have been praying for you, and my heart is very burdened for you. And I want to be very careful with this, and it's not what I want to say, but the Jezebel spirit has already been here. The Jezebel spirit opened our event. This is a rebuke and a correction of no one. This is an observation. Before the word of God was open, there was a platform. It was a high place. On it was a pole, an ashram. The same thing that's used in a strip club for women who have the Jezebel spirit to seduce men. I agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. And and, and really, honestly, I... I think um, I think Driscoll probably was a lot nicer than I would have been about this whole thing. I mean, so I'm I'm, I'm gonna give him that. I, I'm I'm and I want people to hear me say that because I, I I don't disagree with what he said. Okay, so let's just let's go with what he said. In front of that was a man who ripped his shirt off like a woman does in front of a pole at a strip club. Yeah, he's not wrong. That man then ascended. See, our God is not arrogant. He doesn't ascend. Our God is humble. He descends. And then he swallowed a sword. Yeah, did you hear that? They're calling Mark Driscoll off the stage. You're out of line, Mark. <laughs> yeah, here we go. He's humble. He descends. And then he swallowed a sword. And Jesus cried. Okay, Pastor John, I'll receive that. Thank you. He said, you're done. <laughs> the same men that sit there and watch and are sitting there cheering and like nobody said anything. They're just like, oh, okay, I guess this is fine. Yeah. <laughs> to one person um, stood up. <laughs> I, I agree with what Driscoll said. I, I really do agree. Um, matter of fact, let's let's go to the um, And then here we go. And then here's another angle of it. Swallowed a sword and Jesus Christ. They okay, got rid of it. Pastor John, I'll receive that. So they got rid of him. They ejected him. This is intense, bro. It is. This dude's leaving. If your brother offends you, go to him privately. I talked to Mark for a half hour. There was not one word of that. He's out of line. If you want to say it, he can say it to me. You may not agree with me. You may not agree with him. But we are brothers in Christ, and there's a right way to handle disagreement. Everybody in there is yelling at him, and he pulled the uh, he pulled the Matthew eighteen card yeah. on these guys. Try to self justify what he did. Yeah, he should have come <laughs> to me first. Um, now here, Patty o O'Connell is saying this, and and there's a lot of people saying this. Um, I think this was planned. Now, here's here's what I want you to know. Um. It could have been. I wouldn't put that past anybody. I mean, you know, you got to find a way to put yourself in the in the you know whatever. You, and and you got to, you know, there are men out there who are masters of creating their own press, if I could put it to you that way. Yeah. And what people are doing is they're saying that Mark Driscoll is, you know, is we we appreciate what he said. And look, I, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you that I think. What Driscoll said was correct. I, I somewhat agree with what he said. 
But here, there's another, there's another angle of this that we have to consider, okay? For example, when false teachers call out false teachers, we don't celebrate the false teacher for taking a stand against a false teacher. Do y'all, y'all get what I'm saying? When... And this is how false teachers work, and this is where everybody just kind of seems to, uh, this is where everybody seems to fall apart, is that there are men out there who are false teachers and who are just scripturally unqualified. There, There are men out there who are absolutely dangerous, who say things that you and I would agree with, and there's no problem with what that guy just said. Um. But it doesn't mean we need to celebrate them. It doesn't mean that we need to s- s- pick a side. You know, when, when, when Nazi Germany is fighting communist Russia, you don't pick a side. There's no side to be had there. Okay, they're both wrong. And they just happen to be fighting each other at the time. Um, but, you know, you know, somebody may have a good point. And in that situation, you may think, I would have, I would have agreed with that. And, uh, and I get that. That's fair. So um, there, uh, let's see here. I, w- I want to go to my Twitter feed, if I can. And here, here's what I want everybody to see. And th- this is the point I'm going to make. And I want you to just, just kind of just kind of hear what I'm saying. I want you to just, just follow me. You may not agree with me, but I want you to at least hear my perspective on this issue, okay? Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Um, Gabe Hughes, and this is a guy that I like. I I, I think he's a good fella. Um, and he said, what he said was correct in this instance. Do you know what else doesn't belong on a stage at a men's conference? Mark Driscoll, you know, that's fair. Um, here's something else I want you to read and just listen to me. Um, I know everyone wants to give Driscoll props for something right at the moment. I can't do that. He's a man who's unqualified for the pastorate. He's not repentant of what he did at Mars Hill. He fled church discipline and preaches even though he no longer qualified. He's no longer qualified under First Timothy and Titus. Just because he got one thing right, uh, something that should have been obvious to anyone with a functioning brain cell, doesn't mean I will give him any props. Blind mice find cheese and broken clocks are twice a day, so a man who is deeply in error may still stumble across the truth doesn't mean we should give him the time of day. That is very The broken clock worded. is a perfect illustration. Yeah, I agree. And, and that, that's, that's what we call the, uh, the broken clock fallacy. Um, for example, guys, listen, um, and this is the post that I made. If we're going to congratulate Driscoll for what he said here, then we need to start openly commending Greg Locke for standing what's right when he's right too. And Greg Locke, I mean, there, there was, um, there was a time not too long ago, Greg Locke took a big stand against Freemasonry and they were bringing all this Freemasonry stuff to the church and burning Freemasonry. And, uh, people were messaging me with all that stuff saying, Hey, you know, uh, isn't this great? What, what Greg Locke's doing? He's, he's burning all this Freemason stuff. And I said, well, that, yeah, I, I guess that's good, but you know, but doing that is good, but Greg Locke is still bad, was my point. Okay? What Driscoll said is good, but Mark Driscoll is still bad. And I want everybody to get that. What, Greg, what Driscoll said was good, but, what, but Driscoll himself is still bad. And I want it, I just, I just, I hope, it, does that make sense? Yeah, I think we put that comment up there that he's possibly planned. I don't know if he did or not, but... Like you said, I wouldn't put it past some people because you do a stunt like that, and people are like, "Oh wow, well maybe he isn't that bad," and and then he gets a following that way, and it's, yeah. it's a dangerous way. The philosophies of men that I think it's Colossians chapter two verse eight that God warns us about. Just be careful. Yeah, be careful those philosophies of men. Well, and 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 you know, and here's here's the thing. He's playing. Um, he's getting a following. I think the same way that Andrew Tate's getting a following, which is this whole, "Hey, I'm a, we're I'm a man. You know, we're gonna we're gonna do some over the top manly manliness," and. Uh, you know, but here's the thing. Um, and here's a tweet Driscoll put out just yesterday. Okay, he says going to live stream every day this week to help everyone understand. Here, here's where it gets into the, the bad doctrine: the Ahab, Jezebel, and Elijah spirit. The same spirits are at work today. Get ready. Now, let me translate that for you in layman's terms. 
what he's saying is is that there are demons and spirits out there. One's the Ahab demon, the Jezebel demon, and the Elijah demon. That's charismatic demon slayer talks, what that is. Um, and that right there, that plays into Greg Locke territory. When you're when you're talking that whole, you know, the the Jezebel spirit, and and by the way, I've talked about Jezebel a lot. I've talked about the doctrine of Jezebel on this channel. I preached a whole sermon about it at our church, but I have never one time said ever in my entire ministry that there is a Jezebel spirit. And if I did, I want to correct it. Okay, um, and because there there is no Ahab spirit, there is no Jezebel spirit, there is no Elijah spirit. It's the Holy Ghost is what Elijah was operating under. Yeah. So, you know, and, and that's the problem. Everybody gets in all this, you know, you, you've got a you've got an anger spirit in you. And that's what all Vlad and all these, you know, Saldivar, that's why I can't get behind Saldivar's because um, he says a lot of interesting stuff, but I can't get behind these guys because they talk about, the, you know, you know, the gluttony spirit and, the, you know, Spencer's got the Waffle House spirit and the Krispy Kreme spirit attacked me the other day. And, you know, he got the angry spirit and the, and the, you know, the reason you started drinking is because the alcohol spirit got you. And, you know, I just, I, you know, I don't think that's sound. I think that's charismatic mysticism. And which makes me sit there and say, Hey, I just, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I, I can't follow a guy like a few years ago, you was a Calvinist and now you're charismatic. I don't, I don't even know where you are. And so let me, let me take a moment before you write me off on this. Let me take a moment and I want to give you an example and forgive me. I could not, um, I could not sh burn this, render this video before the live stream. For some reason, my, my program was not working but here's what I want you to see. Um, it was a couple years ago, Oprah Winfrey said something really stupid <laughs> about Jesus being, um, Jesus was not the only way to heaven. And I don't know, did you, did you ever remember when that happened, Brother yeah, Justin? Yeah, there's multiple ways. And Jesus, it, it's one way, but it's not the only way. It's kind of the way she worded it. Yeah, and that's, that's what she did. And, and she, it was a big deal when she did that. And I, I remember that. Uh, one of the dudes that was the biggest face that called Oprah Winfrey out when she said that was Benny Hinn. And people don't remember that. Um, do y'all remember, oh, what was it? Um here, let me let me pull it up here. Y'all remember when Joel Osteen went on Larry King Live and he denied that, um, let's see here. Um, yeah, here it is. Okay. Joel Osteen, this was this was a long this was like this happened not long after me and Rebecca got married. This was a long time ago. <laughs> um, Phoenix, Arizona. Hello. Hello. Um, the Bible does not have so condemnation, but of truth. Yeah, I would agree with her. I believe that. So then that's the what Jew is not going to hell. No, I. I, I mean, can't. Well, here's my thing, Larry. Is I can't judge somebody's heart. You know, I don't know. Only God can look at somebody's heart, and so I don't know. I just, to me, it's not my business to say, you know, this one is or this one isn't. I'm just saying, here's what the Bible teaches, and I want to put my faith in, uh, you know, in Christ. Okay, so. Um, just to sum that up, and I, I don't want to get into all the details of that, but Joel Osteen went on Larry King Live and was asked point blank, um, you know, is, is there a way, is Jesus the only way to heaven? And, buddy, he absolutely, him hauled around, wiggled around that thing and could not, just couldn't handle it, just, it was a mess. And he, he embarrassed himself. I think he, I think he, uh, I think he messed up. We're gonna put members only on in the live chat. Yeah, there's, there's a few things going on. Okay, yeah. let's let's uh, wave at me when that happens. Yeah. So, um, so we're 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 making that. Um, let's see, somebody's somebody is saying something ugly. Is that what yeah, it was? Yeah, there's a few curse words getting thrown out there. Yeah, that's fun. That's always fun. So, um, yeah, there we go. Um, we can get rid of that that nonsense. So, um, there we go. Is it gone now? Okay. Well, good. Um, yeah. So we will get rid of some of that stuff, but, um, here's, here's what I'm saying. Benny Hinn heard that Oprah Winfrey denied Jesus was the only way to heaven. And then Benny Hinn also heard that, uh, that Joel Osteen, him hauled around on Larry King live and Benny Hinn called both of them out. 
Now, does that mean that I need to celebrate Benny Hinn as some sort of hero? Does that mean I need to get on the Benny Hinn train and start sending money to Benny Hinn's ministry because he's such a heroic guy? He took a stand on one issue and made a good stand on, on, on an issue, but that doesn't mean that he's good. He may have been right about that, but that doesn't mean that he's good. And by the way, the video that I'm about to show you, I, I learned about this video because C.T. Townsend was posting this nonsense on his own personal Facebook page a couple years ago. The boy has no discernment. That you got powerful women like Oprah Winfrey that sits on her show. She's a little sick, you know. I'm just <laughs> blunt. You, you don't like me, I don't Oprah. care. <laughs> Any lady that sits on her show and says Jesus is only one way to heaven, she needs help. I'm here to tell Oprah, you're wrong, lady. Okay, no, 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 okay. Benny Hinn destroys Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> and, and, and he's right. Benny, what Benny Hinn just said right here is right. But that doesn't mean that I need to get excited and be on the Benny Hinn fan club. Benny Hinn's right, but he's still not good. Does that make sense, Brother yeah, Justin? that makes sense. Well, Absolutely. Jesus is not one of them. Jesus is the only one. There's only one. There's only one. There's only one. See, I, I agree with everything he's saying right there. There's no problem I here. don't care. Who believes different? I don't care if it's, the, if, if it's the president or the queen of England. They're wrong. There's only one Jesus. Yeah. One I mean. Savior. One Lord. If any man preach any other gospel, even if it's an angel, the Bible says, let them be accursed. Is sure. it in the Bible? Like, like we That's have no Bible problem says. right here. There's no problem. We're we're a minute into this, and he's not said anything wrong. If they so. preach any other gospel, let them be accursed. There's only one gospel that I know. I am stirred up. I am so stirred up, I'm mad. <laughs> I'm angry. That needs to be a sound bite. <laughs> I am stirred up. <laughs> I heard a pastor on Larry King. Yeah, he's going to rebuke Joe Osteen. I, I got so angry. You know, there's nothing wrong in getting angry. The Bible says, be ye angry and sin not. That coward, that's what I'm going to call him, a coward. He, he openly exactly calling, what they are, is cowards. Calling Joe Osteen a coward. <laughs> this is rough. Yeehaw, buddy. When Larry King said, is Jesus the only way to heaven? He said, that's up to God. Man, I got mad. Up to God, he said. What Bible is he reading? <laughs> Jesus said, I am the way. And I am the truth. And I am the light. No man goes to the Father but by me. No man goes to the Father. I got so angry, I got so angry, I, I actually said, who else hung on that cross? I wish I could have. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I've had enough Benny Hinn. That's the most <laughs> Benny Hinn I've had in a long time. Um, but Benny Hinn says something right. Does that mean Benny Hinn is good? Well, that, the answer to that is an emphatic no. It goes back to that broken clock theology. Yeah. <laughs> sure, they may clock. say something right. Doesn't mean you keep the clock on the wall. Where, where I come from, they say a blind a blind hog still finds an acorn every, every now, now and then. Yeah, that's true. You know, and, <laughs> and, and, and that's true. But just because Benny Hinn said one good thing on a one particular issue one time does not mean that we that Benny Hinn is good. And I think everybody can agree on that. I don't think, I don't think anybody who watches this channel would have a problem with that. But just because Mark Driscoll said one good thing one time on one particular issue and everybody's talking about it, that does not mean that Mark Driscoll is a good guy. It doesn't mean that at all. And um, I just, I, I wonder, I wonder where everybody's discernment is on this stuff. Now, I, I, I'm going to admit, this was exciting and uh, it, was, it was neat to watch this happen. But uh, 
you know, and, and I, I mean, it took a lot of, a lot of guts to stand up there and say that, but that doesn't mean that he's a good man, that he's right with God, and that he's a man that we ought to be following and, and, you know, hanging out with. That's what I'm saying. So, um, let's do this. I hope I've made my point clear. Let's, um, let's get into the comment section here after the break and then let's uh, let's play that. Y'all want to play that uh, lizard people thing again? Let's play that again. And uh, so leave a question or comment in the live chat. We'll try to go ahead and get t- take those in the next section. And uh, so make sure you go ahead and do that. And we will be right back. Don't go away. All right. I got a few minutes to myself here. I wonder what I should do. I think I'm going to watch one of those Spencer Smith guys' videos. This is going to be really awesome. Oh, here's a good one. Today we're going to have a whole video dedicated to why contemporary Christian music is run by a bunch of effeminate weirdos. Make sure you smite your like button and the lizard people won't get you. It's very serious out there. Please take the time to do it. I love this guy. He's so stinking funny. (laughs) Oh, man. It's because of the hair on the men. Oh, this is going to be good. Oh no, the like button! The like button! Oh, okay. Where'd he go? Where was he? What just happened? I thought it was just a big joke. Wow. All right, thank you guys very much for uh, taking the time to watch our live stream today. We're always honored when we have a good crowd come out with us. Had over uh, almost 1,200 people watching it at the peak there, and so we appreciate that uh, very much. Looks like you guys, if you have any questions or anything, go ahead and try to leave those in there, and uh, we'll try to get to as many of those as we can. Um, Here we go. Let's just go to, uh, um, let's see here. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh boy, got some crazy comments here. Uh, born again, 1984, 499 super chat. Everyone send a super chat and help with the camera situation. Thank you for <laughs> that. And then we got a uh, 999 super chat from Stephanie Allen, uh, saying uh, number one fan. Thank you very much for that. Um, I see here. I uh, just wanted your thoughts on having my own pastor uh, watch over my videos when I post them rather than just posting rogue. I'm under the authority of my pastor. That's my only question for the night. Um, you know, I don't know. I, it might be not be practical having him watch every video you post, but, um, you know, I, I just go ahead and post them. If there's a problem, we can talk about it. And he can, you know, my pastor can gladly call me anytime and ask me if, uh, uh, what I meant, what I said, make sure I'm doctrinally straight on that. So I, I don't know. I don't think any. I don't think it'd be practical to have him watch all that. But just bounce the basic ideas of what you're about to say off of him, and I think that'd be fine. Um, let's see here. Um, I don't know what that means. I kind of feel Driscoll did that for show. That's what's eating my gut up anyway. The deep gut wrenching feeling. Yeah. So some people are saying that. Some people are saying that. I'm not saying that. But you know, whatever. Um, what about the Athens UGA contemporary conference? What do you think about it? I think these, uh, conferences that are going on. A lot of them are not good, uh, especially when they're being led by, uh, women preachers. That is not good at all. So, um, there's no reason for Driscoll to be hoarse from being awake since 1 a.m. to pray all night. It's all play acting and for attention to make himself look more religious. Very nauseating. Yeah, that's what a lot of people are saying. That's what a, lot of, a lot of people are saying that. Um, and by the way, I want you guys to know that Mark Driscoll immediately apologized for what he did. So he took the stand and then he took it back. Yeah. I want everybody to remember that. Okay, so uh, both Liddell and Driscoll go back on stage. Liddell heaps praises on Driscoll. Driscoll apologizes for calling out the way he did and should have gotten permission. So that's what they were saying. Driscoll made the stand and then he backed up on yeah. it. You know, so um, 
Yeah, that's that's not good. Sleep for Beauty says, "Was that Rebecca in the lizard costume?" No, it was not. I promise you, it was my <laughs> it was my oh, my son in there. So, um, making a prophecy, Spencer Smith will become a member of Greg Locke, Stephen Furtick, and T.D. Jake's family next week. How dare you? That's not true. <laughs> you you speak lies in the name of God. So. Um, Joey Murdoch says, love you, brother Spencer. Love what you do. Don't ever change. Hope to see you soon. Yes, sir. Brother Joey, we need to get a date uh, sometime. We'll get it, make it happen. And, uh, so, um, Sally Reed says, uh, what's your opinion on spiritual gifts? Do you think women can have spiritual gifts or are they just for men? Um, uh, I think, uh, men should do be the office of a bishop, but, uh, you know, everybody talks about spiritual gifts, but nobody talks about like Romans 12, the gifts that people have. Let's see here. I think they're serving gifts. Um, everybody wants the big ones. Yeah, everybody wants to, you know, <laughs> like, like honestly, there's people out there that if they can't be the center of attention and preach from the pulpit in front yeah. of everybody, they're not happy. Yep. And they think that's the only way to serve the Lord. Um, I want to point you to this. There's something called, uh, the, 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 my Bible program calls it the gifts of grace. And I, I maybe that's a fair way to say it. Um, here's, here's what I want you to see. Romans 12, 4. But for as we having many members in one body and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ and every one members one of another, having gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophesied, let us prophesy according to the portion of faith, or ministry, uh, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhorting, uh, he that giveth, let it do with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. So those are, those are like gifts that God gives people in the church. And um, it's kind of, you know, it talks about the body of Christ and, you know, the gallbladder and the, uh, the you know, the ear canal are not the same thing. They don't do the same purpose. And if you swapped them, boy, you'd have a problem. I promise you that. Um, the liver and the brain are not the same thing. And if you swap those two, I promise you, you would not be doing very well. Um, so, <laughs> you know, you ought, to, you ought to find what you are. And, and I think a spiritual leader in your life can help you find what you are. And um, so that's, that's what I want to point you to. And, and look, we, the gift of tongues, the gift of healing. What about those Roman 12 gifts? Anybody ever? I, I don't have a whole lot of people ask me a whole lot about those. Well, it's always the fancy ones. <laughs> yeah, it's always the fancy ones. I, I, you know, it's always like, I want to preach and I want the sun to stand still. And, <laughs> to, you know, I want the rivers to turn to blood while I'm preaching. Well, how about you go clean the bathroom? Yeah. Can you do that? No, no, the bathroom. You don't want to clean the bathroom. You don't want to watch the nursery. Oh, you! Oh, you just you wanted the sun to stand still before the entire country, you know, and and you want to call fire down from heaven like Elijah, you want to call in your own nuclear strike on your enemies, you know, and uh, so no, 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 nobody, nobody wants to be the guy who paints the nursery. Yep. What's the deal with that? Why are, why aren't we as excited about that gift? That's a that's a good gift. Oh. Um, so praise the Lord, uh, Robin Panky, twenty dollars super chat. Thank you very much for that. Um, JD Burke says, "I'm gonna call you JD Burke forever, brother John." I'm sorry. Uh, what are your thoughts about a church using a slideshow for displaying hymns, either in addition or instead of using a physical hymn book? Um, you know, here's here's the problem. I've been in churches that use the hymn book without a screen, and I've been in churches that they all they do is put the words on the screen. <laughs> And I'm going to tell you something. Um, when when a church does not have the parted notes in front of them, everybody's singing the melody, and there's no harmony in any of that music. And so it becomes one-dimensional, and it kind of becomes kind of flat sounded. Yeah. You know, you ever notice that when you were traveling? I'm not even very skilled with music. Yeah. But I know that the notes are high, you sing high, and notes low, you sing no. That's yeah. my extent, but I understand enough to know that when you have a hymnal, you can see the notes. Yeah. It even helps me. Even though I don't understand music, it helps me. Yeah. Like you said, when everybody just sees words on the screen, they're just going to follow something next to them. It's all going to be one yeah. thing, and it will be flat. Yeah. There's a difference, yes. And I mean, you could argue whether it's right or wrong, but... I well, like seeing notes. <laughs> people don't realize this, but I, I'm actually formally trained as a singer, yeah. and I don't sing a whole lot though. But I mean, I've, I've I sang in a, a a choir that we we won a national competition when I was in high school, and so I've I've been trained, and I can I can read the music, and I know what the music says and stuff like that. But when you when you take away the baritone and the bass part and the tenor part um, away from men, 
And then we just have to sing the melody with yeah. everybody else, and that's not good. And uh, you lose you lose that dimension, that harmony to the music. So I don't like it. I, I buddy, I just I like a hymn book in my hand, buddy, and there's reasons yeah. for that. So. Um, Savage Cabot says, I used to get so upset looking for my spiritual gift, I realized I can cook and have people over for lupper. You can use mundane things uh, for the Lord. Yeah, you can. Yeah. I, I agree with that. That's that's excellent. That That is an excellent thing. People need to realize that you, I, I, I don't know why it is, but some people think if I can't preach, then I can't do nothing. Well, trust me, I, I preach, and I'm going to tell you something, preaching ain't everything that goes on in the church. There's a lot of behind the scenes stuff. And um, so, uh, Spencer, how can these false teachers teach that Jesus is the only way to heaven and then go be a false heretic? Why? It is so goofy. They have to stand before God. Well, that's that's the nature of deception is that if, you know, there are layers to deception, there's degrees to deception. Um, not everybody is an arch, arch heretic. Some of them are just, just dangerous enough that, they say a lot of good, but they say just enough bad to get you in big trouble. It's kind of like poison. Rat poison has like 99% cornmeal, but it's that 0.1% of the poison that's just enough to kill you. And I think that's what Satan's trying to do. He's trying to put just enough truth in the mouth of these false prophets so that you'll believe them and you'll get excited about what they say. But there's just enough poison in there to damn your soul. And that's that's what the Lord, I mean, that's what, not the Lord, but that's what Driscoll is uh not Driscoll. I'm sorry. I'm reading the screen. That's what that's what false teachers do, and uh, so simply blessed. Can you give any history on Mark Driscoll? We did that early in the live stream, so go back and check that. And um, as your mom says, I love our traditional hymns, hymnal. Thank you very much for that. And um, so we do both. We have hymnals and announce the page number, but also the words on the screen. We have a lot of people who prefer not holding the book. And we've also got a lot of harmonies. Amen. Well, good, good. Um, that's excellent. So um, Dylan says, pray for Mary Emmanuel, preacher stab multiple times on the spiritual gifts that the perfect is to come is Jesus. Why would we stop speaking God's language when we return silly charismatics? Um, I'm not sure what they're saying there. <laughs> thank you for the, thank you for that. I, I, I try to point people, what about the Romans 12 gifts? What about those? Why don't you, why don't we follow those, man? I think that's important. Um, got gifted memberships. Praise the Lord for that. Um, Keith says, I don't want to catch the Waffle House spirits. Uh, thoughts on the Mari Mari attack. Are you, did you, what do you know about that, Brother Justin? Not at all. I saw it, but I didn't know much about it. Well, what was that? Just some of the, Do you know what it is? I, look, I just saw an article thing. Yeah, I, 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 I haven't it. looked at it yet. I've been so busy trying to do mail outs and all kinds of stuff today. April 15th, tax day, is a big day for a lot of people. So um, that's going to be exciting. But uh, let's see, there was, uh, there was one I favored it here a second ago. Um, all right, what are your thoughts on eloping if family members disagree with getting married young, basically? Um, wow, there's a lot there. <laughs> um, you know, if, if, I'm going to give it to you this way. If you're a young person and you just, you just got it bad, you smitten with this girl, and you smitten over him, and y'all just love each other, and your mom says it's not God's will, your daddy says it's not God's will, your pastor says it's not God's will, um, your youth pastor says it's not God's will. Um, it might not be God's will. <laughs> it might not be a good idea to go get eloped. That might not be God's will. I don't, I mean, you know. So if, and that's the thing, and I'm, I'm 40. I've been married I mean, I don't know what, how old was I. I got I was twenty three when I got married. So what is that? Seventeen years. Um, I'm gonna tell you right now. After seventeen years of marriage, you better realize you're marrying her family too, <laughs> and she better realize she's marrying you. You know, you're both marrying each, not just each other. You're marrying the family. So you're gonna have to see his brothers, and you're gonna have to have to see his sisters. And another thing, Brother Justin, I've learned is that I've had to put up with her sister's husbands. Yeah. Those nuts. Um, and I, I, that's what came with the package. So um, these crazy brother-in-laws who can't decide what career they want to do, nuts. <laughs> I, got, I, got a, I got a brother-in-law who's a flat earther. Wow. Can you believe that? He's a nut. Man, <laughs> so um, makes Thanksgiving conversations fun. 
<laughs> well, in my case, it's made Thanksgiving conversations non-existent. So, um, yikes. Um, but here, here I'm, I'm going to tell you this, and I'm not saying this about you. I'm going to just say this in general, okay? When, um, if I see two people that are wanting to get married so bad that they're going to bypass the advice of their pastor and bypass the advice of their parents and bypass the um, bypass the advice of their youth pastor, then I'm going to tell you right now, the only reason they're getting eloped is because these two young people are filled with lust. That's it. That's all. Would you agree with that? What do you think? Yeah. That's it. It's like I, I was married at 18. My wife and I married at 18. Mm-hmm. And we were married young and everything, but but we also didn't do it in a bad way, if you will. Um, yeah. I think there's a, like I said, there's a right way to do it and there's a wrong way to do it. Um, yeah. But if you're doing it for a wrong, if everyone's saying no, there's probably a reason. I mean, if you got support behind it and maybe there's another reason, I don't know the whole backstory of what's going on there. And maybe it's a money issue. Maybe they just don't want to make a big deal about it. I don't know, but it needs to be done the right way. It yeah. is a lifelong decision. It's, I mean, God made it between one man and one woman for life. That was his yeah. intentions. And that's ought to be something you ought to ask your pastor about. Sure. Well, here you go. Savage Cabbage says, as a uh, coming from a woman who almost eloped at 17, I think it's wise to listen to your family, devote yourselves to Christ, and give yourselves some more time to mature first. Yet yeah, when you're 17, you're just a baby. <laughs> you're a baby. You know, take, take some time. You got forever. So, um, so Hannah Reed says, man, now you tell me I got to deal with my (laughs) (laughs) in-laws. Oh, poor Jake, you know, poor Jake in-laws and you got to deal with some crazy people up there. I'm sorry, Hannah, (laughs) I'll pray for you. So, um, but you know, um, I'm happily married and, um, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad that, uh, Rebecca married me. What a blessing that's been, um, Mark and Jennifer said, we got married in the drive-thru. I need to hear that story. <laughs> I, did you use an onion ring? No video, no proof. Uh, yeah, so. Um, but Kat says, okay, thank you. I'll ask my pastor about it. I'm 21, though. Amen. Good. Yeah, you know, look, you don't, don't, never rush into getting married. Boy, that, <laughs> that I mean, getting married is the most wonderful thing if you do it right. But if you do it wrong, buddy, it's not a wonderful thing anymore. It is a long life, a slow life, and a miserable life for reals. So um, I took some pictures the other day. I want to share everybody my pictures. We're doing a photo shoot with your family uh, Thursday, right, yeah. Justin? Yeah, Thursday. Yeah, so we here's some photos I took. I'm, I, have, I have really enjoyed photography the past few years. So I got this good one of this blue jay, and uh, everybody be excited about that for me. Ooh. And uh, see so everybody, yeah, that's another uh. good one of blue jay. Yep, yeah, there you go. And then uh, I got this beautiful flowers here. I got some eclipse pictures. How about that? Y'all Ooh, check that out. That's really good. I like those. Yeah, those turned out pretty well. And uh looks like the, the big horns in the sky. And um, there we go. So got those good pictures there. Had a lot of fun with that. That eclipse was crazy, bro. It was nuts. So uh, Patricia Rhodes says, I've been married 50 years. Amen, yeah. What a blessing. Thank you, guys. Patricia and her husband are wonderful people. So... Uh, we're excited about them. So, all right. Well, let's take a quick break, brother Justin. I th- well, I think I think we've got an hour and a half. I think we might be done for the night. What do you think? You you think uh, you think? Yeah, we've it's gone really well. Yeah. yeah, I think we've covered a lot. So uh, I'm gonna put you on camera, and oh, uh, here we go. We got to adjust your saturation here. You're you're looking kind of pale. I am. And, I'm uh, the sun so all day too. Huh? There, there we go. There you go. Whoa, you look a little bit too much there. Okay. Much, yeah. All right. Now 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 that you look all saturated, and everything. Why don't you give everybody a word of wisdom before word we go wisdom. tonight? Talking about the spiritual gifts, remind yeah. me one of my uh, favorite ones when it comes to serving. Psalm 84, verse 10. This is King David talking. It says, For a day in the courts is better than a thousand. I'd, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wickedness. I've preached on that a few times before, but, you know, everyone wants to be the one to center attention, but, man, just be that doorkeeper. When I was uh, little, saved, and 10 years old, and asked my pastor, what could I do to serve? says, open the door for people. Like, who wants to do that? But I did it. I put a smile on my face, and, and I loved it ever since, just holding a door for someone in the church. A door, well, a job no one really thinks about, but you know what? It puts a smile on someone's face, and so yeah. be a doorkeeper. That's a spiritual gift there. <laughs> you know, and, and, and I'm going to throw this out there, too. There are people that when they hear that, 
Like just that. Just that, yeah. Just that. Well, yeah. There's what? <laughs> that's a big deal. It's like do you realize the carpets don't vacuum themselves, the trash doesn't get take out itself. Like it's yeah. There's a lot of stuff that a church needs help with and pastor can't do everything. The pastor's busy and the pastor needs help and just go ask your pastor. What can I do to help? <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, I'm gonna tell you I don't think I've ever told the story in the live stream here, but um when I was a teenager, I can I can remember a couple times in my life before I got saved that um, I was really just I felt like the Lord was dealing with me, and um, I I was 16 years old and I was driving I was cool you yeah, know yeah. and um, <laughs> and I felt like the Lord was really dealing with me I was in kind of conviction troubled and I, I the only thing I knew to do I didn't know how to be saved I didn't know what it was um, but. I drove over there to Hebron Baptist Church, a big mega church in the area in Decula. And um, I drove into that parking lot. Everybody was going to church. I, was, I, was, I drove in on the tail end like it was like the church service started at 11. Yep. I was there like 11.02. <laughs> People were still walking in. And I parked my car, and I sat there, and I sat there, and I sat there. And, um, and I drove away. And... Um, it was, it was years later I got saved. But I do wonder, what if somebody was just out in the parking lot just saying, hey, welcome to church, yeah. and had caught me before I drove off? I wonder what would have been different. How, how I don't know, I could have been a, a witness in high school. I don't know. I wonder about that. What if somebody had just caught me before I drove yeah. off? You know, because I sat I didn't know anybody. I, didn't, I mean, I knew people I went to school with. I But that building was so big, I didn't even know where they were. I, I just, I didn't even know, I didn't even know what, I didn't even know what church was. You you walk in, sit down, and where what do, where do you I do? Go, you know, <laughs> but I do wonder what, what if somebody had been out there, some spirit filled person, had been out there and said, "Hey, you want to come to church with me? I'll come and sit with you." Yeah, you know, um, I'll tell you this um, now. I I I was not a fan of Jack Scott, but one time I went there um, and uh, just to see what it was yep. when I was traveling, and um, and honestly. From the second I pulled in that parking lot to the second I left that parking lot, there was somebody with me. Yeah, they they met me. They, I, my feet. I did not even have both feet on the ground, and somebody was shaking my hand yep. in that parking lot. And I want to I want to give them that. That's a big deal. And I've been they, a few they, churches they like that. Me. Yeah. What, what's that? I've been a few churches just like that, and yeah. you just feel welcome. Like yeah. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the, those people at First Baptist Hammond. They walked me into uh, Daryl Moore Sunday School class. And then they walked me, um, sat with me in that class, and then they walked me to the church service, yeah. sat with me in the church service, and then uh, and then they walked me around for a little bit, and then they walked me to my car and wished yeah. me a good day. I mean, they, that, that wasn't a second of that church I was by myself. So little stuff like that. You ain't got to be a preacher. What are you talking about? I got to be a preacher. I got to stand up and talk in <laughs> tongues for me. Why don't you just go shake a hand? Yeah. You don't. You don't. Why would you diminish that? It's a big deal. It's a big deal. Why would you, I mean, like Brother Sean at our church, he stands there and smiles and holds yep. the front door for everybody. How you doing? And me and him always cut up and make jokes with each other. Yeah. That's a that's a huge thing. That's a gigantic, yep. lofty, huge, gigantic thing. Why would you diminish that by saying, I, if I can't be a preacher, I can't be anything? <laughs> oh, what was me, yeah. you drama queen? You're yeah. spiritual Kardashian is what you are. <laughs> <laughs> Just making people feel welcome. That's a big yeah. deal. That is that, it's one of the one of the biggest deals, I think. Yep. So well, that's a good word. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. And uh, you guys have uh, been a blessing to us. Thank you for watching tonight. We've got we only got 15 thumbs down tonight. I, th I think that's a record. That's pretty good, actually, no, no, for that many good, people yeah. watching. Yeah, We made a lot of people mad. That's okay. So anyway, <laughs> we love you guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being our friends and supporting our channel. Thank you guys for become channel members, and um, your support is so meaningful. And I just I, I struggle because I wish I wish I could do something for you <laughs> to uh, to show you how much I appreciate you. But I guess um, – I guess the only thing I need to do is just uh, make another third atom. You think I, be, might as well, yeah. Yeah, you think so? I think so. Um, okay, we'll do that. <laughs> third atom five's on. We'll do that. God bless you. <laughs> just let you know, third atom five. We'll start tomorrow. We'll start filming it. So, God bless you guys. Y'all have a wonderful night. We're going to play a song. We'll see you later. Lord, you deceive me. Oh.